I'm currently right now in a cage, four and a half feet wide, 11 feet long. A cage I've been in for over 38 years here at San Quentin Prison. I got a stay of execution, but I came within three hours and 42 minutes of being strapped down to that gurney and injected with lethal poison. This horrible, horrible massacre of a family in Chino Hills, California, happened on June 5th of 1983. It was uh, a scene out of Helter Skelter or the Manson murders. It was blood everywhere. It was absolutely horrific. The sole surviving victim identified the three assailants as three white or Mexican men. Kevin Cooper had been serving a four-month sentence for burglary in the Chino Institution for Men, which was a minimum security prison. So Kevin was out there, and he saw a hole in the fence, and he did what he did all his life to escape from his abusive father, and he ran. He escaped. Our dad was very strict. If my dad said, don't do a certain thing, he meant don't do it. Well, Kevin would do it anyway. And then he would get a whipping. We got whippings when we were little. And that's Kevin. I really don't like talking about my childhood because I really didn't have no childhood. My adopted father used to beat me, so I used to run away from home and I survived on the streets. So Kevin ran through this hole in the fence and he finds this house this, that seems to be vacant quite near the Ryans, about 150 yards away from the, where the Ryans lived. At first they indeed were looking for several white guys, but then they found this black man who kind of fit their mental image of what a, a killer would look like, and they thought, ah, that's it. All the killings took place in four minutes. There were 144 wounds, so four minutes Five victims, one person with three weapons, it doesn't compute. They were frustrated that they couldn't find other evidence to tie him to the crime scene, like fingerprints. So I think at that point, they fabricated that evidence. The evidence that convicted Kevin Cooper includes a number of things that have been proven uh, to have been false. When Kevin Cooper was arrested and tried, the atmosphere was racially charged. Killed a nigger, electrocuted him. The people were actually standing outside the courthouse, carrying these signs, screaming at us. That was scary. We kept wondering, is it safe for us to even be here? But we knew we had to be there for Kevin. I think the more fundamental problem for the justice system was an implicit bias that infused the entire process. We have a system that treats you better when you are rich and guilty than when you are poor and innocent. There's an enormous link between race and poverty and people who end up in the criminal justice system, but in particular where you have defendants who are African American or people of color who are accused of murdering uh, white people. Everybody knows, even the people that promote it know, that it's racist in application. It's only used against the poor and the poorly defended. It makes mistakes. It kills, uh, it kills the guilty as well as the innocent. There are 167 men and women who have been tried and convicted and sentenced to death and ultimately have been found to be innocent and cleared and freed. Kevin's been incarcerated since 1983. He's been on death row since 1985. Came you know, hair's breadth from being executed in, uh, in 2004. I was in a, a death chamber waiting room. Uh, they stripped me down, butt naked like a slave on an auction block. And they examined my body from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and every part in between. And my life was on the clock. Every minute they ticked by. You know, it's just an unreal, surreal type experience, but it is real. You know that these people are not playing with you. They are going to murder you. When 
Kevin's execution was stayed only three hours and 42 minutes before he was going to be executed. The Ninth Circuit granted him the right to file a new habeas corpus petition to try to show that he was innocent. In this case, not only do we have doubts about Kevin Cooper's guilt, we also have an alternative uh, suspect who is in fact a convicted murderer himself. Shortly after the crimes were discovered, a woman came forward and said that her boyfriend had come home the night of the Ryan murders with a pair of bloody coveralls that he left at her house. He arrived in a vehicle that resembled the Ryan station wagon in bloody coveralls that she then handed over to the police and they destroyed them. We have obtained his DNA and we are hopeful that it'll show that Kevin Cooper was not the assailant. I wrote several columns calling for that DNA testing. You can have the worthiest cause in the world, but if no one's paying attention to it, it won't get resources and it won't get addressed. I really wanted to come here and go to San Quentin, go to death row. And I just want to meet him face to face. I never want to take away from the people that have been doing this longer than me. But if I know my power and I know I can do something, just let me be the final push at the end where everyone else has done like the real groundwork. I never want to take that away from anybody. So I've never met Kim Kardashian. I was really gratified to see that she tweeted my Kevin Cooper column and called on Jerry Brown to review the case. Kim Kardashian face to face with a man convicted of killing Kim Kardashian was just spotted at one of America's most notorious prisons. San Quentin prison, where she paid a visit to death row inmate Kardashian Kevin Cooper. Kardashian first tweeted about Cooper's case in October, writing to then Governor Jerry Brown, quote, Governor Jerry Brown and Gavin Newsom both have requested additional DNA testing. When the crime first happened, DNA testing was not available. These days, it is now possible to test for tiniest amounts of residual DNA. We are in the process of testing nine items of evidence that we think will prove that Kevin is innocent. When the preliminary results came back, one thing was clear, Kevin's DNA was not on anything. He was elated. He felt that finally some people might believe him that he didn't do these killings because his DNA was nowhere to be found. Not having Kevin Cooper's DNA on the hatchet does not necessarily prove anything. Finding someone else's DNA, not Kevin Cooper's, would be what would prove the, who used it at the time. There was an orange towel that was used by the killers, and that did yield a uh, DNA profile. Presumably, that is the killer. It's not Kevin Cooper. He's serving time for murder. He has never murdered anything. His spirit is too good for that. I believed in him before, just from what I've read. But meeting him and hearing from him and looking into his eyes, I absolutely believe that he is innocent. There's just too much about this case that simply demands clarity, demands a new investigation. He's the man convicted of four gruesome murders in the early 1980s. Governor Gavin Newsom has now opened an independent investigation into the case. I want to make sure it's done fairly, judiciously, without any consideration of bias uh, or prosecutorial misconduct. I'm almost very thankful that Governor Newsom granted me this innocence investigation. I'm just the first time in history that a uh, man on death row in California ever received such an investigation. So that's a good thing. People will understand that there's a lot more to sentencing people to death than just finding a murderer and saying that person should die. It will demonstrate that we have had a man in prison on death row for over 30 years who did not commit the crime. And it will be a thunderclap 
that will undercut the existence of the death penalty in California and will begin the process of ending the death penalty in the United States. If we get this in and we get this exposed, I have to believe that I will take my place out there with you on the fight against the oppression. That's what I want. That's what I need.